I'm interested in understanding where life came from on Earth. And it looks like it keeps going that way, and I can't quite see. That is one of the reasons why I go underground. Because underground, things are happening in a way that's analogous to what might have been happening in the first few chapters of life on Earth. Okay, here we go. started out not knowing how to harvest light. I'm interested in understanding what happens to a planet or, or to a, a, a planetary biosphere that has never learned to harvest light. And in order to understand that, I need to unravel what happened in the Earth's past. These are things that keep me up at night. And then, okay, so we need to find the spectrophotometer, and this is part of what we need. And we've got two spectrophotometers here, aren't they cute? They look like hedgehogs, I love these things. Um, this one looks cleaner, let's take this one. This is um, something that we use to measure what's dissolved in the water. Boop, boop. I love that noise. Okay, so we need the tubes. We can't forget those because we need the tubes to put the water in, to put in the spectrophotometer. So these are the tubes. Ah, we need this. This is called a multimeter. It's gonna tell us how much salt is in the water. And that is gonna tell us how much energy the microbes have to eat. What we're doing when we measure the water chemistry is measuring the conditions that this, these organisms like to live in. We're measuring their habitat. Here we go. Okay. Watch your head. Underground is one of the least explored places on Earth, but there's lots of life down here. This arch right here, microbes were making acid and dissolving the walls of the cave. These strange squiggly uh, slimes form on the walls. We don't understand how they form, but we know they're made by life. We don't know which life or how they're formed. It's really still a mystery. We're just gonna look down here. This cave formed by a long process but it started with microbes that we don't know where they came from. How did it get going? How did it get started in the first place? That question is a, is a pretty fundamental one in terms of understanding how life emerged and, and established itself permanently on this planet. Those are questions that we really don't know even how to guess an answer right now. But places like this are going to help us get some perspective on it. Down, down.
I walked into a science dream. A certain kind of biofilm that doesn't show up all the time. That's here today. They don't bloom often. They bloom only in certain conditions when the water level is very low and there's not too much oxygen-rich water percolating down from the surface. So to have stumbled upon a bloom of this exciting magnitude is really, it's lucky. So I'm really excited. I'm so excited I have to bite this pencil. <laughs> It's kind of surprisingly hard to catch. It feels like, it feels like silk actually. You can barely tell if it's touching you. That's why it's hard to catch it. It's like you, you almost don't feel it. So we'd like to know how microbes persist because we know that the Earth has been challenged by all kinds of extreme events in the past. The Earth has become a snowball covered in ice. The Earth has been bombarded with so many extraterrestrial meteorites that the oceans may have boiled. So those events would have presented a challenge to what life had emerged. Life has always persisted underground, even when the surface was too challenging. We're gonna measure how much salt is in the water with this. Okay, it's very salty. We're gonna do oxygen, because that's a sure thing. Yeah. All right, so when we break this ampule, then we're gonna rush the ampule to this spectrophotometer over here, because we only have a few seconds to make the reading. This is one of the most uncomfortable places on the planet, as far as I know. Look at that, that was cool. So what color is it? It's yellow, no oxygen. Excellent. That's what we thought, but let's ask the spectrophotometer if we're right. Well, okay, so this is real life. The spectrophotometer is not really behaving as it should, which means we'll probably have to come back another day. Not perfect performance, let's just say. <laughs> of course. Status report. Today we actually had both good luck and bad luck, and that's kind of how it goes. So we had good luck because we saw this bloom of slime. We had bad luck because the spectrophotometer got damp and we could only make half the measurements that we really wanted to make. We don't always get immediate gratification. We have a question and sometimes that question can be answered on one trip. Sometimes the question can't be answered in the lifetime of one scientist. You guys ready? Anamo. We've been coming here for 20 years or so, and we still don't understand all of what's happening. We're learning as we go, and it's really tiring and frustrating, and we're wet and cold, and we're there for a long time, maybe 10 hours, maybe 12 hours. Then we go back to the lab, and there are months of work to do. And we have to do that in order to make sense of what we've seen here. Doing science, what I feel most is confused. I feel like I'm not getting it, like I still don't have the answer after all that hard work. I would say that the confusion in particular is essential to progress because you can't be confused if you haven't asked the question. What keeps me up at night doesn't really keep me up at night. It gets me up in the morning. Science is a process, you know, it starts with wondering. I think every human has this capacity for curiosity and wonder. Curiosity, it has a sort of frivolous ring to it. But I think we should fight against that oppression. If we lose that sense of wonder, that sense of being at play in the universe, I think we've lost something important. We're slowly creeping towards understanding, but we're, we're, we're sort of toward the beginning.